This is Josh from Infamous Brewing Company, and I'm drinking Texas. Hey, this is Chip and Mike with Drinking Texas, and we're with Josh from Infamous Brewery at their sixth anniversary party. Infamous? What does that mean? Infamous. Oh, dusty. <laughs> infamous is, is when you're more than famous. Six years, baby. Six big years. Heck yeah. Josh, tell us a little bit about the brewery. Certainly. Uh, well, as you know, we got our start six years ago. Um, I'm a native New Yorker. Uh, spent my whole life in the graphic design world. Uh, met a, uh, a young lady from Texas, I started traveling down here uh, probably 15 years ago, fell in love with the area. Um, my brother-in-law used to live around the corner here and one day we were drinking and throwing our uh, empty beers in a UT uh, Longhorn ice bucket and decided, wow, wouldn't it be really cool if you could get something like this delivered as a present instead of like, you know, the crappy presents that were available for guys with one of the flowers, you had edible arrangements, but you know, what does a guy want? Beer, sports, and beef jerky at its core. Yeah. So uh, we moved down here. My daughter was uh, eight months old. We moved right around the corner here. And uh, right where we're standing, I built a company called Beer Bouquet, which was the ultimate guy gift. That, the answer to 1-800-Flowers. Heck for yeah. Kids. And uh, over the course of running that company, uh, a gentleman contacted me to sell homebrew kits on my website. And I uh, said, cool, send me a kit. Let's see what it's all about. I like beer. Let's, uh, let's try to brew some. So I ran home. I brewed a gallon of beer in my kitchen sink. And uh, I waited six weeks to drink the beer. Uh, beer turned out great, and then I realized that I just waited a month and a half to drink an afternoon's worth of beer. <laughs> so I needed to make more beer, and I needed to make it faster. So uh, we found a guy um, who was selling homebrew equipment, and I uh, bought a 10-gallon rig from him, and every Friday I'd roll up the overhead door here, where the brew house is now, and I'd brew 10 gallons of beer, and now every week I'd have 100 beers worth of, uh, of beer to drink, and uh, not that it was ever too much beer, because there's no such thing. But Definitely not. In the uh, in the neighborhood was coming over here and hanging out and drinking my beer and uh, I knew that I had something because I've had plenty of crappy homebrews and you don't go back for seconds. Right. You gotta pour it in the planter and be like, oh, you know that. Oh, that was great. Yeah, I'm, thank, I'm thanks so much. No more. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so uh, one day I found myself back in New York, happened to be sitting at a bar next to a fellow. A bartender introduced us and said, uh, "You guys know each other?" And we looked at each other and said, "No." And went back to our conversations and. She came back with a couple of shots of Jameson and said, you guys need to talk. And uh, he had heard my story. We were both bar flies there at different times. And uh, he worked for uh, Deutsche Bank. And uh, we, at that time, decided that we were opening a brewery in Austin together. That's <laughs> so awesome. he moved down. Um, uh, unfortunately, at the time, I couldn't run both businesses, being a manufacturer and a retailer. Right. So I had to kind of pick which child I loved the most. Um, the brewery won, obviously. I uh, sold the other company and started Infamous Brewing Company in its place. Uh, we won't mention the names, but the uh, former partner is no longer with the company. Uh, the gentleman that I bought that 10-gallon system from became my head brewer. Uh, nice. He was a master welder, and so we fabricated all of our own equipment. Um, this is a truly home-built system here. All these tanks came out of Frito-Lay. This was a cheese starter tank that came out of Wisconsin. Um, so we, brew we built what we couldn't afford to buy and what we knew how to use, which was a giant homebrew system, which we're still brewing on today, winning. Winning all kinds of awards on our uh, on our giant homebrew rig. Heck yeah! So you know we've got no automation. We do everything the old-fashioned way with fire and paddles, and uh, and it's you know it's a long brew day, but the uh, the, the the reward is uh, fantastic. I mean, the, the beers have really been phenomenal. Um, so you know six years into it now, we've got an arsenal of beers. We've won hundreds of awards uh, for pretty much any beer that we've ever made. Uh, we have. Uh, great parties up here all the time. You know, tap room is open five days a week, and uh, well, our specialty is jackassery and shenanigans. <laughs> so we do uh, quite a bit of that, which you'll see a little bit today. Yep. Um, and coming up on six years is uh, is pretty remarkable. You know, the industry has grown significantly since we started. We were talking earlier uh, when we started out. We were the twentieth brewery to open in Central Texas. Uh, there's now over eighty five just in Austin. Yeah, so, just within the city limits of crazy. Austin alone, there's eighty five breweries. Uh, uh, so it's getting, uh, it's, it's getting a little tight, you know, there's a lot of competition out there, there's a lot of really good beer out there, and um, you know, we're happy to have other, uh, other brewers to share our war stories with, we're all friends, we all call on each other when the, when the time comes, I can call any, any of the other breweries and ask them to borrow grain or hops, and they do the same with me, and Heck yeah. so you know, at the end of the day, we're all in it together, there's now over 7,000 breweries in the U.S., uh, pretty remarkable, you know, when, when we started, there was 3,100 breweries in the country, which is the first time it had 
reached that point since prior to Prohibition. Right. It took 80 years to get back to where it was prior yep. to Prohibition, and only five years to double that number. God, it's crazy. No. <laughs> There's lots of really good beers, but you've also got lots of really good names. <laughs> Who comes up with those? Uh, collectively, we do. Um, um, you know, initially, all of our beers had really off-color names. Yeah. Um, so we had to make them a little <laughs> bit more commercially acceptable. For example, Hijack uh, was originally called All Over Your Face Cream Ale. Nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, something a little bit more yeah. sellable. Little, yeah, it a little bit more. Called, uh, Ass Hammer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Texas Firebush was Bugsy. So, you know, I have a big affinity for the Prohibition era, for bootleggers, rum runners, all the infamous characters uh, of, of our uh, history. And um, so I always knew that I wanted to have the beers named after infamous people, places, things. Um, so why not call it Infamous Brewing Company? And, yeah. you know, we started like, there's no way that doesn't already exist. And right. it didn't. And I was shocked. Uh, so Infamous Brewing Company it was. And... Um, Few, well, about a year after we started, uh, my grandfather passed back in New York. I went up there for the funeral. Here's your grandpa. And, uh, here's your grandpa, Papa Jack. And uh, his uh, surviving you know, brothers and sisters were telling these crazy stories about how my family was directly involved in the Lindbergh baby kidnapping <laughs> and in the 1930s. And I'm like, what? And my grandfather never told these stories. Yeah. Uh, never talked about it. But I started reading all these books that were written about it. Um, you know, my great uncle, his brother and, and his brother's father-in-law were both deputized by the police chief in charge of the investigation. Oh, wow. And he had a feeling he knew that this person was responsible for it. So he deputized my great uncle and his father-in-law to kidnap this person, hold him in my great aunt's basement in Brooklyn for five days <laughs> under crap. arrest and write a confession letter that he was a Lindbergh baby kidnapper. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, didn't hold up. Uh, <laughs> and Imagine it, it that. It made a little bit more sense to me now why... They changed the family's name, and I always ask why they changed it from Schlossman to Sonner. And they were like, well, it was very hard for a Jewish person to get work in the 1930s right. in New York. No questions asked. That was fine. That was a good enough answer. Now it made a little bit more sense why Uncle Mac lived in Puerto Rico. Yeah. And why he only served uh, two years out of a 30-year sentence in Sing Sing, and why they changed the family name to Sonner instead of Schlossman. <laughs> So, infamous stuck. I didn't even know how infamous I was. Uh, yeah. I mean, the family ties there. So In this particular it, uh, case, it, it really is more stuck. than famous. <laughs> it really is. So, there's a lot of really interesting stories that I never knew. And, yeah. And, uh, and only found out about really after we started the brewery. And it's, it's infamous sticks. You That's know? awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Hey, so if y'all want to hear more stories like that. I've got a ton of them. He's got a ton of them. He really does. So, come see Josh. Come check out the brewery. It's Excellent. Thank you. His one, his excellent. one damn line. His one it. damn line. Well, thank you so much, for taking Texas crew, for coming out and celebrating our sixth anniversary yeah. with us. And uh, you guys are awesome. I hope you're gonna have a blast today. Dude, so drink we, all of the beers. Try we have, everything we Oh, got. we will. We oh, definitely yeah. will. Oh, cheers, yeah. fellas. Here's Great to, to you. have you out. Hey, here's the, right. cheers here's, to all of you. Yeah, and here's the six more. Six more, exactly. Mm -hmm. Cheers.